Hi, this is David Heller with MCAT Cafe, and we're here at SolidWorks World 2013, and I'm with Eaton Donald, and Eaton is the president of ExactFlat. Good morning, Eaton. Hi, David. Pleased to meet you. Yeah, uh, Eaton, how's the show going for you? We're having a great show. We're very encouraged by both the reseller enthusiasm, the end user customer enthusiasm, as well as Dassault's enthusiasm for our product. Well, let's, let me tell, let's talk about your product. What, what exactly is ExactFlat? ExactFlat is a product that brings functionality for sewn products to SolidWorks' solid modeling CAD package. Historically, SolidWorks has been, and it continues to be, a product for modeling solid products, and ExactFlat is a set of tools that bring functionality for producing things like automotive seats, marine interiors, industrial fabrics, and things like this to SolidWorks. It's the first time ever it's been done. So in SolidWorks, you're looking at a 3D model? Is that where it starts? Or, uh... Typically, yes. Yeah. So, for example, if a car seat is modeled in SolidWorks, they will model the metals, the foams, the mechanical elements, as well as the surfaces for the trim that goes over top of that, the leather covers and so on. And so what we do is we take that solid uh, model and convert it to surfaces, flatten it from 3D to 2D, and then we have a whole set of workflow tools from pattern engineering, nesting, costing, and documentation to prepare that CAD file for a cutting table. And it's the first time ever that customers can use a 100% digital workflow for getting their product to the cutting table before they had to use manual process. Okay, so it starts off with a 3D model. That's correct. Uh, then, it, then let's go step by step. Okay. In step one, step two, step three, just so we're all clear about this. Sure. The first thing is the customer will prepare their file, uh, 3D model. Uh, the 3D model then has to be flattened. It's a 3D model, now it has to be flattened because fabrics are flat. Right. <laughs> so we have a 3D to 2D flattening uh, utility, and it's a very complex set of algorithms with mathematics that model the exact mechanical properties of fabric, how they stretch, how they're going to manifest themselves um, on the 3D object and in a flat, uh, a flat pattern. Once we flatten it, then we will do the uh, pattern engineering. Pattern engineering very simply is adding things like seam allowances, notching, um, grommets, uh, drill holes, grain lines, things that really allow the sewing operator to manufacture that flat pattern. From there, we nest those pattern pieces. Nesting is a process of compacting those pattern pieces on a fabric roll to optimize uh, material utilization. And lastly, two things, very important to all organizations, costing and documentation. So you have costing built in, how does that work? The costing is actually quite revolutionary. Uh, we take a number of inputs. First of all, there's the actual amount of material that's going to be used. So material, um, uh, the material, uh, amount of material, the actual sewing um, and uh, manufacturing required, and then a sequencing of operations, which is very unique to what we do. So for example, when you uh, uh, sew together a car seat cover, you'll need to sew a line and then turn it and then you'll need to flip it over. So all of these other list of operations that are required for manufacturing can be attached to the geometry of your piece. This is very unique to ExactFlat. The benefit for the customer is simply they can get a very detailed actual manufacturing cost very early in the design cycle. Not an estimate, not five or 10% margin of error, an exact estimate for how much it's going to cost. Oh, that's fabulous. And the output of the of your process is, goes to a cutting machine? That is correct. It goes to either a CNC cutting machine or a die cutting machine, depending on the industry. We output a, a what's called a double AMA, the American Apparel Manufacturers Association DXF file. And it's a standard cut file that can be read by all the cutters. And uh, yeah, that's that's what we output. Yeah, this is a quite quite a unique uh, and very specialized product, and uh, I wonder how long it you know. And you've got it seems like I've covered all the bases, with you know we've thought we've done a lot of thinking about this. And how long did it take to, to develop this and get it to the point where it is now? Well, it's a great question. It actually took a, a quite considerably long amount of time. The product had its roots in. Uh, decorative textures for the automotive and mold industry. So we started out by taking 2D textures and applying them to 3D molds or 3D objects for, um, for etching out mold and texture designs. These are used for a car dashboards or A pillars or things like that. And we got a very good understanding of this mapping process from 2D to 3D. And that was about eight years ago. And what we did since then is we said, okay, now let's try the challenge of 3D to 2D and applied specifically to fabrics. Mm -hmm. It took a long time to work out the mathematics about how to go from 3D to 2D and how fabrics stretch. Now what's unique about ours is that we can both handle 
simple surfaces and very complex non-developable surfaces. Our company, in order to develop this product over the last seven years, uh, has had three skill sets. Number one, advanced mathematics, a research level mathematics. The second thing is um, knowledge of the sewing industry. And the third thing is knowledge of the CAD products and how to program into APIs. And this is the convergence. This is where we really have a, a core, core competency. Yeah, uh, let me ask another question. Is there, is, do you have any ability to collaborate amongst other engineers that are working on a design or what have you? We have, uh, our product is uh, also unique and that is database driven. So we have separated the geometry from the data required to add features. So for example, if you're going to have a metic particular material type, you pick that from the database and you attach it to your geometry. If you're going to have some features like a half inch seam allowance, quarter inch seam allowance, or whatever it might be, you pick that from the a company standard uh, seam allowances and you attach it. So, because we've separated the geometry from the data, this data can be shared right. very, very, very easily. As a result, um, groups in finance, in uh, manufacturing, in uh, documentation, in engineering, both conceptual design, engineering design, uh, prototyping design, they can all have access to this. And it's a remarkably good feature for sharing data. Yeah, this is, you, you've got a product that covers a wide range of products. I mean, we're talking about aircraft seats or upholstery in cars, and just, I suppose, uh, uh, a high-end a high uh, furniture manufacturer might be interested in working with you? That's absolutely correct. We, we, we think that approximately 15 to 20 percent of the overall install base of solid modeling CAD packages are candidates for our product. And we think that that number is going to grow over time, and especially in this day and age, when products are made of assemblies of solids, foams, fabrics, and a whole number of other materials, um, we think that we're on trend with where the market is going. Yeah, have you thought about uh, the fashion industry at all? We absolutely do. Uh, the fashion industry is a very large industry. What's uh, interesting about the fashion industry is they typically have uh, 13 retail periods per year, mm -hmm. rapid turnover in product, time is very, very important, they have to be on trend, and we think our product fits exactly uh, right with that. In fact, what we're doing with the fashion is we're doing some um, uh, very advanced uh, experiments in taking 3D body scans, mm -hmm. surfacing on those body scans, modeling pants, shirts, all these different types of things, and then taking them directly to the cutting table, and in a fraction of the time that was previously required. Well, I'll have one last question, and then we'll, then we'll tell people how to find out more about it by going to your, to your website and so forth and learning about it. Uh, but you know, uh, I would, uh, what, one thing is is that there's so many different types of fabrics. There's uh, maybe uh, imitation leather, there's a fabric that you might wear. Um, how do you account for that? Well, we have uh, accommodation for the mechanical properties. Things like Young's modulus, Poisson ratio, these are our engineering properties of fabrics. They are really the properties which describe how fabrics perform under stress. Mm -hmm. So when I pull a fabric, it's going to get long in the, in the uh, transverse direction and narrow in the what's called the axial direction. And we have all the engineering properties associated with how that fabric performs as part of what users can input into our, into our system. We are working on putting together a mechanical database, a properties database, much the same way that metals have a database mm -hmm. already in the system. And we'll be pulling together all this information. We want to make it very easy for our users. So when they have a product from a manufacturer, say the manufacturer is in a canvas like Sumbrella or something like that, we've got the whole list of uh, uh, the whole catalog and the properties associated. That's why it took such a long time to get this going, because there's, there's so many facets to it. We are very excited by the utility we're bringing to the end users, and because we've thought through the entire workflow from beginning to end, we think that users are going to be extremely excited and it's going to deliver real business value for them. Yeah, I, 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 I can see that. Well, anyways, um, uh, why don't you let us know where people can learn more about ExactFlat and, and your product and what you do. We're on the web at exactflat.com, www.exactflat.com, and uh, we're open for business. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'll let you get back to your booth so you can talk to that line of people that are waiting to talk to you out there. Appreciate it, and thanks for giving us the time, David. We really appreciate the chance for an interview. Thank you. Mm -hmm.